In this video, we are going to code the bubble sort sorting algorithm in Java. Even though bubble sort definitely isn't the fastest sorting algorithm in the world, it's a really great algorithm for beginners to learn and implement. And we're going to see if bubble sort can sort an array of 14 ints faster than the five hours or so it took to do it with bogo sort. Hopefully this is a little faster than that. If this is your first time on the channel, thanks for watching. My name's John and I do a new Java tutorial video every single week. So be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the new video every week. Before we get started, as always, the full source is available in the link down below in the description, so go and get it. A few weeks ago on this channel, we coded a ridiculous sorting algorithm called BOGO sort. That's the sorting algorithm where all you do is randomly shuffle your list and then check to see if it's sorted, and if it isn't, keep shuffling it until it is. And that video is here if you want to go check it out. That algorithm is obviously silly, and it just gets super crazy slow even with just a few values in your list. Here we'll be coding bubble sort. Now, of course, it isn't a super fast sorting algorithm, but it is much better than bogo sort. First, let's just look at a visual representation of how bubble sort works. This is a GIF that's just taken from Wikipedia. What it does is it goes through the list starting at the beginning, and it compares each number with the number after it. And if those two numbers are not in the right order, it swaps them. And if they are in the right order, it just leaves them where they are. And then it moves to the next number and compares that number with the one after it and does the same thing. And then when it reaches the end of the list, it just starts over at the beginning and does the whole thing again. You can see in this animation why it's called bubble sort, because what happens is like the highest numbers kind of bubble to the top. It keeps going through the list over and over again, swapping values when they're out of order, and it only stops when it goes through the list and doesn't have to swap anything. And that's how it knows that the list is finally in order. Obviously, if you go through the list and no two numbers are out of order, you know your list is perfectly sorted. And that's how this sorting algorithm knows that it's done. All right, so enough about the conceptual part. Let's get to coding. I have pre-coded here just a little setup that gives us a random list of numbers that we can sort. So quickly, just to step through it, uh, we start out with an array of ints. And we'll just make it size 10. So we'll start with just 10 ints that we're sorting. And then I have this for loop here that goes through that int array and then fills it up with random ints basically between 0 and a million. And then once we have that array of random ints, print out the before state, where of course that list is not in order at all. And then we have the spot where we are going to be writing our bubble sort sorting algorithm. And then right after that, we print out the array again, and it should be in perfectly sorted order. And this print array method that I'm calling to print the array, all it's doing is looping through each element in the array and printing it out. Okay, so here's where we're going to be writing our bubble sort algorithm. So I think we want to start with a for loop. Let's start with the process where it goes from the beginning to the end of the list. And for each element, it'll check whether it is out of order with the one after it or not. And if those two are out of order, we swap them and then we move on to the next two. So here's what that looks like. We're going to create a for loop. And we'll just do for int i equals zero. And we're going to loop while i is less than the length of our numbers list minus one. So you might be thinking, usually when we're looping through an array, we might go until i is less than numbers.length and not numbers.length minus one. So why are we doing numbers.length minus one? And the reason is when we're looking at the second to last element, we'll be comparing it with the one after it, which will be the last element. So, so there's no reason to look at the last element by itself. There's nothing after it to compare it with. So we just can stop at numbers.length minus one. Then of course, i plus plus to increment i every time through the loop. All right, now each time through the loop here, we want to compare the element at the index we're looking at with the one after it. And if they're out of order, we want to swap them. So we can write that condition with a pretty simple if statement. We can just say if numbers i, that's the number at index i. So the first time through this loop, we'll be looking at the very first element, the zeroth element in our array, is greater than numbers i plus 1. So this will tell us if the number at the index we're looking at is greater than the next number. So if this number is greater than the next number, these are out of order and we need to swap them. And swapping two numbers is kind of a classic programming problem. When you want to swap two variables or here, uh, just two different elements in an array, it's easiest to use a temp variable. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we can create int temp equals numbers i. So temporarily, we're going to save the value we have here at index i in our array to this temp variable. Then we're going to set that value at numbers i to be what is currently at numbers i plus 1. So now our element at index i has what was at i plus 1, and now we have to assign the i plus 1 index to be what was at i. And we can do that by using our temp variable. So we can say numbers at i plus 1 equals temp. 
And that's why you need this uh, temp variable. If you ignore using this temp variable and just set numbers i equals numbers i plus one, they both then have exactly the same value. And the value you had at the i position is lost and you can't set the i plus one position to it. So that's why you temporarily save it to a temp variable like this. This is a very classic way to swap two elements in an array or two variables in any programming language. All right, so now we've coded one iteration of going through the list and swapping the elements that were out of order, but going through it just one time won't make it end up in perfect order. And we can even run our program to show what I mean. So we can see our before state where we have just, you know, a completely random order. And then after, right now we're doing just one iteration of the bubble sort process. So what that one iteration does while it's going through each element and swapping them if they're out of order, what you'll end up with is the highest one will be at the top, but all the other ones won't necessarily be in order yet. So what the algorithm has to do is keep going through this array over and over again, swapping elements that are out of order until it has a perfectly sorted list. But that won't happen after just one iteration. So how do we code this to iterate through this list over and over again, doing that swapping until the array is finally in order? Well, here's what we can do. We can create a Boolean, uh, we'll call it swapped something and initialize it first to true. And then what we're going to do is enclose this entire for loop that we currently have in a while loop. And the condition we are going to have for our while loop is swapped something. You will use the swapped something Boolean. So each time through this while loop, it looks to see if swapped something is true. And if it is, it'll keep going through this while loop. Right now, of course, since nothing is changing the swapped something to false ever, this will always be true and it'll just loop through this infinitely. Of course, that's not what we want. What we actually want to do is right before each time we start going through this for loop, we actually want to set swapped something to false. What we're really going for here is we're trying to tell the program, if you go through every element in this list and you didn't have to swap anything, then you know it is already in perfect order. But if you did have to swap something, well, you're gonna have to go through it again. So that's why here, right before we jump into our for loop, we want to set swap something to false. But then the moment that we find out, oh, we had to swap something, something wasn't in order, then we want to set swap something to true. So basically we start optimistically, hey, we didn't have to swap anything yet. But then as we're going through our list and we discover, ah, there was something that was out of order and we're about to have to swap something, we're going to set swap something to true. In that situation where it did have to swap something, once it gets out of this for loop and goes back to the top of the while loop, it said, ah, uh, yep, I just had to swap something, my last iteration through this loop, so I better go through it again because my list still wasn't in perfect order. And you might be thinking what's kind of weird here is we had to start with a swapped something of true. That was just to get it in the while loop the first time. If we started out with it set to false, this value would be false and it wouldn't even enter the while loop at all. So as a side note, if you wanted to, you could rework this with a do while loop and you wouldn't have to start it with true, but I just tend to like the cleanliness of a while loop a little better than a do while loop, but it would work great with a do while loop as well. Okay, I think that should give us a working bubble sort. So let's run our program with uh, 10 random numbers and see if it sorts them. Run. All right, there's our before state, all crazy and out of order. And after we can take a look and it looks like our array is in perfect sorted order. And with just 10 elements, it's very quick, runs in about uh, one second, it looks like. So that's pretty cool, right? We coded our own real sorting algorithm and we've tried it for 10 numbers. Let's increase that a bit and try to sort a um, thousand numbers. We'll run that and still finished uh, very, very quickly. There's all the out of order ones. And now we should see starting, uh, here's the after state. And yeah, it looks like those are in perfect order. Great. And now let's get a little crazier. Let's do 100,000 elements. Here we go. Okay, this one's taking a little bit longer. It's still running. It printed out our, uh, our unsorted list and now it's, it's sorting them before it prints it out. Let's see what happens. Taken a while. Okay, there it goes. It looks like it sorted it in order nicely, but it did take about about 25 seconds or so. So it's kind of a long time. It's not a very uh, effective thing for really huge sets of data. But if you remember our BOGO sort with just 14 elements took something like five hours. And here we're sorting 100,000 elements in less than 30 seconds. So it's definitely not amazing, but infinitely better than BOGO sort. Next, let's step it up and sort a million elements. Here we go. Well, it takes a while to just print out a million elements, but it did finish that. Here we go. 
Bubble sort has a complexity of what's called big O of n squared. What that basically means is, as the number of elements that we're trying to sort increases, the amount of time or the amount of memory needed to do that sorting increases at the rate of the number of elements squared. What that means practically for us here in this situation is now that we increased the number of elements that we want to sort from 100,000 to a million, it may seem like it should just take maybe 10 times as long to sort that because we have 10 times the number of elements. But in reality, because this is a big O of n squared, it's probably going to take much, much longer than just 10 times the amount of time it took to do 100,000. But we'll wait and see. It could take uh, quite a long time. Okay, it finally finished. So it went from about 9.15 to 9.52. So it took about 37 minutes for it to finish sorting those 1 million ints. So this is a pretty long time. It's, it's not near as bad as the five hours it took to sort 14 ints with BOGO sort. But although this sorting algorithm works just fine, it's not efficient enough for you to want to use for large data sets like this. With an algorithm that has a complexity of big O of n squared, you can kind of think about it that when you double the size of the data set that you want to sort, give or take, you're going to quadruple the amount of time that it takes. So here, when we went from sorting 100,000 elements to a million, we went from taking less than 30 seconds to over 30 minutes. So it's taking more than 60 times as long to sort an array 10 times as long. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please be sure to let me know with a like and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see a new Java video like this one every single week. And really thank you for taking the time to like and subscribe. It might not seem like much, but it's the only way these videos get out to help more people. So I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.